Welcome to the Camps Bay Guy podcast, your go-to podcast for everything real estate related in Cape Town. Now, let's get into the show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Camps Bay Guy podcast. I'm very excited about today's episode. We've got a special guest, Richard Gray, the CEO of Harcourt South Africa. I'm very excited to have him on the podcast today. Richard, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Josh. Thanks for uh, having me along. I'm also really excited to be here. Yeah, it's great to have you here. Thank you. Um, how have you been? What have you been really up good. to? Really good. Sure. Been really good. You know, you were at our conference. Uh, we had, uh, sure, it feels like a lot longer ago, but about probably just over a month since then, been to Australia, uh, to the Hawkins International Conference, which was really good fun. And and now here in Cape Town with you. Yeah. So it's been fun all the way. Good to have you here. And yeah, Thanks, sorry, man. it's sorry, it's not uh, it's not all sunshine and rainbows today in Cape Town. We had a we had a lot of rain. I think yeah. Richard almost got uh, <laughs> washed away when he arrived at the indeed at the studio today. But yeah, you made it in all the end. Good. Didn't yes, get washed indeed. away. Um, so yeah, maybe we can kick it off, um, and you can share your background and your journey to becoming the CEO of Harcourt South Africa. So yeah, I'm, I certainly won't bore everybody with uh, my CV. But um, yeah. I did start, I, I was at your alma mater, Rhodes University, and, and studied yeah. there. Had a great time, obviously, as one does there. But um, studied computer science, um, actually did honors in computer science. And, and wow. for anybody who's watched The Big Bang Theory, I know some people have watched the, the TV show, uh, that it was a bit like that, you know, sort of Revenge of the Nerds. In those days, it was, <laughs> uh, tech was really just for the, the guys with the thick glasses who sat in the, in the corner. And I was part of that. Um, and absolutely loved it. I really enjoyed technology, um, left there and started working. Um, and much to my horror, I realized quite early on that if you were in that sort of field, you didn't really get to deal with people much, you know? So you, you kind of got stuck away in your corner, just churning out lines of code. Um, and I, I didn't enjoy it. Um, I really sure. enjoy working with people and, and love people. And uh, yes. so the only way I could still sort of do tech and, and sort of work with people was to get into a leadership position. So I started pursuing that. So within the tech space, sort of leading people. And that was kind of how I got into leadership. Okay. Uh, it took me off wow. to the USA. I worked for Oracle in the USA for a few wow. years, which was amazing. Really good experience. Uh, came back, got into banking, still kind of in the tech field. Um, but once again, sort of more leadership uh, in the tech field. Uh, moved on to bond origination and then uh, got an opportunity 14 years ago to join Harcourts. Um, wow. Their CEO was leaving and got this opportunity to join. Um, I sort of saw it as a bit of a filler job, you know, like kind of look for yes. something else, but not bad in the meantime. And 14 years later, I'm still there loving it. Yeah. Uh, don't see it as a job. It's just a wonderful place to be. And uh, yeah, still equally as passionate as I was 14 years ago. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. And I can I can definitely feel that passion uh, that you have for working with yeah, people. I, I mean, it. I think you I think you're such a you're such a great leader. You care about everybody, you Thank know, you. down to the, you know, the lowest, not not that there's rankings or anything, yeah. down to the lowest, the person who's just starting, the 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 intern, all the way up to the top. And Thank and you. I think that's what makes the company so special is, is having awesome. you as a as a leader. So, Thank so you. yeah, that's, that's amazing. Kind. Thank you. I wanted to quickly interrupt this episode to let you know that you can book a 30-minute meeting with me to discuss any of your real estate needs. Just click on the link in the description below and schedule your appointment. Now let's get into the show. And maybe let's discuss the, the growth of Harcourts um, from 2009. I know we were the HomeNet group in 2009 and That's then right. it rebranded to um, Harcourts um, Obviously, the Australian franchise and yes. or Australasian franchise yeah. came into South Africa. Um, how how did you manage to grow the business um, to where it is now from from then? Obviously, you didn't join in two thousand. You no. weren't there in two thousand and nine, but you you came I joined later in on and yeah. have played a, a big role in the growth of the of the company in South yeah, Africa. Yeah, so I mean, it, it was really interesting because obviously two thousand and nine, two thousand and ten was just at the end of the global financial crisis. So there was like no money. The property market was decimated. It was a great time to get into real estate, um, but also full of opportunity. So um, yeah, we, we really had to have a big growth mindset at that stage. Um, Harcourts was a new brand, um, sort of a mid-tier player um, because of the home net link. So it wasn't a, a startup, but, um, and so it was all about growth and, you know, kind of getting in there with yeah. a growth mindset, um, embracing growth, uh, getting everybody focused on growth. 
and I kind of looked at three big things that I had to get right, you know, to 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 maybe uh, and things that would probably explain our success. Um, one was the team. Um, so it was getting a great team around me that were all focused on growth. People who were not happy to just sit and be a middle of the range company, all wanted to be a bigger, better version of ourselves. So I surrounded myself with good growth people um, and most of them are still with us, which is, which is even <coughs> better. Um, and that Amazing. didn't just include my own team, it included franchisees of ours that had big ideas about growth and, and are still growing. Um, so that was that was the first thing. The second thing was to have a good product. You know, obviously, you know, it's all yes. great to speak about growth and want to do things. But as a new kid on the block and, and someone who was a new brand, we had to make sure we were leaders in technology, leaders in skills development, leaders in marketing ourselves, um, and had to get all those things right. Um, so we had to have a good product, you know, that we could get out and attract people to come to Harcourts. Otherwise, hey, we were just another another name. Um, but probably the thing which surprised me and, and has probably been the difference between us and others um, has been our culture. Um, it's kind of our secret sauce, you know, the kernels, 11 herbs and spices kind of thing. Um, our culture has been the thing that's probably given us the biggest boost in our growth. Um, so, yeah. you know, Harcourts is a values-based company. We've got strong values. It's probably the only company I've ever worked for. If you ask people what our values are, they can tell you. Normally, yeah. it's just something on the wall that nobody knows. Um, so we've got a strong value, strong purpose, um, people who live those values. And I think that's really been the glue that's pulled Harcourts together um, and made us as successful company that we are. You know, we've, in the last 14 years, 13 years of those, um, have all seen an increase in market share. Um, so we've grown our market share, except for the one year we did a bit of clean out. So we, yes. we didn't grow that year. But 13 out of 14 years growing market share, which I think wow. is, is just the testament to that, yeah. So every year since the business has kind of started has been a better year yeah, than, the, than the year before. That's your know, and, and I think market share is really important. You know, people talk yes. about growth and they go, oh, we, we did better, but the whole market maybe improved, so they did better. I think yes. it's when you're growing market share, it means you're doing better than everybody else. And I, that's what yeah. we measure. Okay. Um, so, yeah, it's been really Amazing. pleasing that we've managed to do that. And when you look at market share, how do you, how, how do you measure market share? Is it how many listings you have? Is it how many sales you're doing compared to other agencies? So or, it's quite a few yeah, things. Okay. I mean, it's, it's very difficult in our country as opposed to Australia and other places where Harcourts operate where you can just see market share because it's public knowledge. Yes. Um, here you've got to kind of have a look at things. So we do look at listings. Yes. Um, we look at our footprint. Uh, we do look at sales, although it's, that's the difficult one to get. So we kind of have to uh, look at where we can glean yeah. information from. But yeah, we, we do look at that. And then we look at Lightstone or one of the, you know, the uh, where we, what sort of percentage of the sales we've done of the total industry sales every year is probably the most accurate way to see market share. Okay, um, wow. Because then, you know, you know, what percentage of those sales that were done in the industry you did. And as long as that's going up, then you, you, your market share is growing. Amazing. Wow. And I think... Uh, you touched on you touched on the culture there as well, and for me that's one of been one of the big things for me um, being at Harcourts is 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 the 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 culture. It's just so special. You go to events like the conference and you go to our regional awards, and everybody is just so friendly and happy. And you know it's yeah. it, it it just it makes such a big difference. And then when you go out and you live those values. Uh, and you try to live those values every day as an agent, um, you, there's no way you're not going to deliver the best service Correct. to your clients. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, it is such something amazing. very unique. Um, and it's not something yeah. you can buy. It's not something you can just create overnight. It's something that grows and, yeah. and you've got to foster it, nurture it. And, and, and I see that as certainly one of the big parts of my role is yes. to make sure that the culture is always protected and looked after. So yes. For sure. And I think it's also something where you can always weed someone out very quickly. Absolutely. If they don't fit that culture, you can see it straight away. Yes. Um, and, and yeah. Our so, culture yeah, spits yeah. people out. You know, yes, if, for if sure. you don't fit into the culture, you won't last. It's simple as that. Yeah. 100%. Indeed. I'd like to take a moment to introduce one of my sponsors, Van Zell Kruger Attorneys. Throughout my career as an agent, I've exclusively worked with Van Zell Kruger Attorneys and they have never let me down. I recently had the opportunity to sit down with their director, Eberhard Kruger, to discuss what makes them so exceptional. Thanks so much for meeting me today. For those of you that don't know, Eberhard is the director of Vanzel Kruger Attorneys. What makes um, Vanzel Kruger Attorneys stand out from other conveyancing firms or legal firms? 
Hello Josh, thank you for the opportunity. Property, which is the majority of our services. It's an emotional ride for most people and it's the biggest transaction they'll probably conclude in their life. So whether it's a hundred thousand rand transfer or a hundred million rand transfer, we try to treat each client the same and you know make it a special experience for them. What other services do you offer your clients at Banzel Kruger? We do a bit of everything, to be quite honest. We do litigation, civil, criminal, commercial, a wide range of services. There's pretty much everything that we do or someone inside that specialises in it. So we try to help every single client that walks through the doors. Eberhard, thanks so much for your time today. Thank you very much for chatting to me, Josh, and um, good luck with your career, my man. Sure. So, Richard... What are your thoughts on the South African property market and its direction, especially in the light of the new coalition government? Yeah, you know, Josh, um, residential property in particular is very sentiment-based. It's quite an em- it's an emotional thing. And, um, you know, when people feel uncertain or anxious, they generally won't buy or sell property. I mean, they'll only do it if they really have to. So, so we've seen a very slow property market this year, um, largely because of that, because people have, it's wait and see. I think now that we have a little bit of certainty around the political situation and the, the you know this government of national unity, et cetera, um, I think we'll we'll start seeing a little bit of comfort and certainty coming into people's lives, and and I'm expecting that will be a bit of a catalyst to to get the property market going again. For sure. um, you know, it, it, there's almost like a bit of built up. Um, pressure yeah. now of people who are just waiting and seeing, and and I definitely yeah. expect um, to to see that release. I think on top of that, we can expect some interest rate um, decreases, um, probably sooner rather than later. I think that yes. you know the world has certainly viewed the the changes on the political landscape as positive from a business perspective, as compared to maybe some of the other uh, potential scenarios. So For I think sure. that we will see potentially interest rates coming down quicker. And that combined with the sentiment should be good um, for the property market. This year should speed it up. And I think 2025, I think, is going to be a really good year uh, for, for the sure. property market. I really do. So it's now now's the time to start putting in the hard yards Absolutely. for 2025. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, for do, sure. If you're an agent, do the work. This and, is and it. Put in, the, yeah. put in the graft now That's so it. that you have a really good 2025. That's it. Um, and you think so? Do you think prices? Do you think you, do you think prices might go up because of that? I, I'm not or, sure about pr- you know prices you, are always yeah. difficult to call yes, um, yes. because it does depend on supply and demand, um, yeah. and I think it's area specific. For sure. So I think where there is high demand, um, you might start seeing property okay. prices edging up again. For sure. I mean, other areas it'll just mean there's more volume turnover. Yeah. Um, so it will depend on where in the country, but I think that we're finding that we will find just more activity um, yeah. because right now it's just been slow. Um, sure. But I think, like for example, in the Western Cape, you know, we'll we'll see the activity and the prices probably popping up again. Although um, I know there are parts of the Western Cape where there's a view that maybe the property prices have have run ahead of themselves yeah uh, you sure. know but once again it's very broad to talk about the western cape you yes, know people yes. do that just very easily are oh, the western cape but um you know the western cape's big yeah there's and very di- and very diverse yeah very diverse so yeah but i do think the property market will improve i'm um, going into 2025 amazing yeah amazing. and and it's and it's you know um it's been very resilient the the property market if you look at it yeah. um it's it's the one thing that's probably stood out for me is is the resilience um I think in many other economies, if we had been through what we've been through, the property market would have just fallen apart. Ours really hasn't. I mean, I know in Harcourts, we haven't lost one office over the last uh, year. Um, And we've lost some agents, but not a lot. Um, Just, you know, economically just couldn't make it anymore, but um, not a lot. And I think as a result, we've just shown resilience. You know, people, the property market is is good. There's high demand for property. People, people in South Africa want to own their own property. It's amazing, and we yes. have we have a lot of people who don't own their own properties who who would love to. Um, yeah, yeah. We saw that during uh, when the interest rates went really low and affordability improved for people. Um, how many people bought property? You know, yeah. and I think that was just a really good. It just shows how many people want to own their own own their own homes. Yeah, there's something about owning your own, having your own piece of real estate, That's owning it. your own real estate. It's yeah. like a, a security blanket sort of thing. And it's a South uh, African thing. Yeah. Um, I think so they don't just, see that like in other sort of markets. No, I mean, I look in Australia, for example, at the very high percentage of rent, people who rent properties there. Um, same in New Zealand, you know, not as not wow. as high a percentage of ownership as, as we would probably get to if people could afford, yeah.
Okay, wow. Yeah. And reflecting on the growth of the com- company, what were some of the biggest challenges you faced and how did you overcome them to achieve the current success? So, so the obvious big problem with a new brand coming in is nobody knows your brand. <laughs> so, you know, HomeNet had been a reasonably well-known brand and then Harcourts came along and like literally nobody knew who we were. Obviously, as I mentioned, the, the global financial crisis meant nobody had any money either. So we couldn't yes. go and splash ourselves all over TV and uh, social media wasn't um, as strong then. So, you know, we yes. couldn't do, uh, couldn't even go that route. And, and so we really had to rely on organic growth. It was yes. very tough. I mean, if I had literally one rand for every time someone said to me, nobody knows who Harcourts is, um, I'd be pretty wealthy right now. Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it really was a tough road to get your brand known. And we had to be very innovative. Um, and at the end of the day, it was just getting feet on the ground, boards in the ground, um, growing organically, yes. being a bit patient, um, yes. but being known for all the right things and, and growing in the right way. So I think the wow. challenge was... Biggest challenge was kind of patience around growing the brand and understanding you couldn't be a household name overnight kind of thing. And it's still a challenge for us. I mean, we're up against brands that have been around, you know, 50 years in South Africa. And we've been around 12, 13, 14 years. You know, you're always going to be a little bit behind those. Um, But we're getting there. And and obviously, we feel like we're winning all the time. And we've got lots of offices and a big footprint. And people now get to know us. Um, The other big challenge we had was probably that people felt a little bit inferior, like because we were new that there were these other very established brands that we were for some reason not as good as them. Yes. Um, and I had to really make a, a conscious effort to kind of take advantage of the new kid on the block status. So people were interested in Harcourts um, because we were new and we were kind of uh, the tech guys, um, the guys in tires, you know, sort of we, people were curious about us. Um, and so as a result, yes. um, we had to leverage that uh, to overcome this thing that we might be be inferior in some way or because we weren't as well established. So we had to really focus on the sort of curiosity factor. And we built, we worked a lot on that, you know, like people didn't know who we were. We wanted to tell them who we were, you know, so that was cool. Um, yeah. yeah. I, lo- I, lo- I actually love that aspect of, of the brand because I think that still kind of shines through in the leadership. Not that we, not that we, we, no one knows who we are yeah. now. People do know, know who Harcourts are, but I think we still come from a place where, you know, we're the underdog mm-hmm. and we're still fighting to get to, you know, the top. We kind of, we have a Absolutely. vision that we want to be yes. probably one of the, the top real estate yeah agency or real estate company in South Africa and everybody's kind of fighting for that mission and putting the word out there and like I'm a Harcourts agent and so I I really love that about the brand and I think that's what's kind of I think that's what's impacted might be what's impacted well you've actually just said you've hit the nail on the head what's impacted a lot of the growth yes um within South Africa and with our agents so uh, yeah I I love that aspect uh, um of, of the brand and Harcourts has a proud history spanning. I think, I don't think a lot of people actually know about the history of Harcourts in South Africa, but, um, the history spans more than 135 years and we're known for our service support and industry excellence. How has Harcourts managed to maintain its legacy while continuously evolving to meet the highest expectations of its clients? So it's, it's been really interesting because, you know, Harcourts has been around a long time. It started in New Zealand. Uh, they sort of around 20 years ago went into Australia and then started um, expanding globally into different countries. I think what, what Harcourts has done very, very well is it's stuck to its core business. So it hasn't tried to be anything that it's not. Yeah. Um, so it's been very strong, always been very strong on auction, uh, very strong residentially. Um, and although it's 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 built a commercial arm and it's built some agricultural arms and things along the way, it's still been true to itself, you know, and, and stuck to that. And then always put the client yes. at the center, you know. So I think it, because it's been client centric, um, it's it's managed to maintain that legacy. Yes. The big thing that I think Harcourt has done very well has been innovative. So yes. you know, a lot of other real estate companies, and I've watched them over the years in South Africa, but it's happened all around the world tend to get a bit complacent and they start going, oh, we're big enough now, we don't have to worry. I always sense with Harcourts dealing with the international guys, they're never satisfied. You know, it's like always, what can we do better? What, what, What do we need to do? There's just that constant burning desire to be better. And I think that's what drives a company that's why they don't go extinct. You know, you look at all these, these yes. lots of these, especially recently companies that have gone under after a hundred years and, you know, been replaced by 
innovative uh, yeah. disruptors. Um, Harcourts isn't one of those because they're constantly wanting to get better and improve themselves and and keep up. For sure. I think it comes through in the technology we've got Absolutely. and and all the tools that we get. And we're constantly getting stuff from the for the from the international guys and learning yes. stuff from the international 100%. guys. Um, which I think gives our agents a big upper hand on other yes. agents in South Africa because I think there's a very kind of tunnel vision sort of way of doing things in South Africa in terms of real estate. And when then when you bring something from outside, a different way of doing things or something, a way that you can do it better, it, it gives our agents, it, it's like for having sure. another feather in the cap. So it, it does. Um, for sure, that, that, that experience over time and having the international guys yes. as well has, has it, helped us a lot. It definitely has. Um, and Harcourts has an impressive, um, we've, well, we've touched on it now, mm. international presence with over 879 offices across 11 different countries, more than 6,670 sales consultants and has sold over 574 billion rand worth of property. Additionally, Harcourts has conducted more than 10,700 auctions and manages over 100,000 properties with the property being sold every 10 minutes and rented out every 17 minutes by our team. These figures are truly remarkable. How has Harcourts achieved such global success um, and what strategies have been the key in maintaining and growing these levels of excellence um, and reach? Yeah, I think, I think once again, Harcourts has stuck to its core, you know, so values-based company, culture being very important. It hasn't tried to grow where it felt it couldn't. So if you yes. notice that a lot of the Harcourts countries that they're in um, are fairly similar. So Australia, yes. New Zealand, South Africa, you know, all fairly similar markets, um, operate real estate in the same way. They ventured into America with a very unique value proposition, which was bringing auction into America, and they're doing really well with that. So that was, that was clever. Um, they didn't try and just become yet another real estate company in the US. Um, yes. They went in with a specific value offering, which was auction, which they don't yeah. do in the US and now they do. Um, and they've and they've cracked mar markets like Indonesia and Hong Kong and places like that, which have been smart moves. You know, they haven't just tried to go yeah. into Europe, you know, and try and dominate yeah. Europe. Uh, they've been really clever in their global expansion. Um, but I think once again, client at the center, be innovative. It's all the core stuff, culture yes. being really important, put the right people in place. So yeah, I think clever expansion. And touching on Europe, do you think that Harcourts will ever go into Europe? Do, at the is moment, it, there, isn't the a, there isn't an appetite at the moment, because I believe yeah. that they the, the, the thinking at the moment is the countries they're in, there's so much scope still to grow, yes. that to go and just spread yourself thinly all over the world is not the way to go. Yeah. Um, I think we've seen other companies try to do that and fail. Uh, yeah. And that's where it's the selective thing. Certainly never say never. Um, For sure. But I think if they do, you know, the thing is within Europe, every market's different as well. So it's yeah. easy to say Europe is a bit like saying Africa. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's every market's a bit different and you've got to, um, yeah, so I think they'll be selective. Yeah. No, for sure. And the UK is also, I mean, if you yeah. just look at the place like the UK, the way they do real estate Correct. there compared to the way they very do it, different. Yeah, completely different. It's Correct. not very regulated. Yes. South Africa, I think, is more regulated than Definitely. the UK. Um, yeah. So, yeah, different different markets. But I think we've done really well um, yeah. in the markets that we've moved into. Certainly. And I think the one thing that I've noticed about Harcourts that kind of makes it different to a lot of the other companies is that, the, your head office, like uh, CEO and and the people that work in the head office, don't really have like ownership of. They're not no. focused on you know growing their branch or because the, they don't own a branch. Correct. There's a head office, and the head office is responsible for making sure that the agents are doing as many sales as yes. possible because the head office only makes money when agents sell because right. they're earning royalties. So I think that's what's very unique and maybe has what kept what has kept our company. Well, what has made our company continue to grow yeah. because you know you're not making you guys are not making money technically no. unless we selling property so yeah. you got to find a way to get the agents to sell more property it's a really good observation josh i mean that's i think it's the difference as well because we're not yeah. conflicted in any way where we're trying to grow our own offices or in in maybe in competition with others and we have a very clear model we don't yeah. own any of our own offices um, it's all franchised and we are totally motivated to make other people successful you know not and yeah our success comes from that 100 percent. amazing amazing yeah. and i love it i, I love yeah. that i love that business model yeah 
Um, and, and how is Harcourt's competing with companies like EXP, especially with agents, uh, a lot of agents wanting to move from larger companies to smaller niche firms? Mm. Um, what are your thoughts on, on this trend uh, and, and how, how are Harcourt's kind of working to yeah. kind of retain the agents? So it's, yeah. it's interesting. I mean, in my 14 years now in real estate, um, every year there are new people who come in with new models. And and I think that's brilliant. I, I get quite annoyed when people write them off because uh, I think that's arrogant. I, I think you've got to look at any new person coming in, look at what they're doing, look at their models. I think we're fortunate that we can sometimes take the best ideas out of those models and and maybe the, and I think that yes. makes us better um, because, sure. because they, it introduces new thoughts um, sometimes. Um, the key is, though, that I think a company like Harcourts is very flexible. So, you know, people come in with new models um, that maybe offer more commission or offer just different ways of working. Um, as long yeah. as within our, our companies, we can offer the flexibility to match those, then people won't really want to leave. So, yeah. so we have seen a very small exodus from Harcourts to those sort of companies, although yeah. a lot of them have grown well, some of the new companies. Um, they haven't fortunately been thanks to Harcourts. Yes. Um, you know, if I look across the Harcourts group, we, we offer all the models, you know, right from the very traditional sort of 50-50 agent yeah. has their desk and they come in every day and and uh, and it and that caters for a lot of people um, yes. right through to the high split uh, work from home, have your own business kind of model um, yeah. and, I, and it's sort of everything in between. And I think as long as you have that flexibility, sure. you're going to be able to provide yeah. and, and be competitive. I think the other big thing which Harcourts gives um, is flexibility around people's brand. Um, you yeah. know, we really do understand that although we have a sort of mother brand and Harcourts offers that security of, of a brand that, that covers all yes. these countries and, and everywhere, that people have their own unique um, personality, their own unique brands within yes. those brands. And we, we, we love that. I mean, you're a great example yes, of it. I mean, sure. where people can grow their own personality and their own brand personality and their own position um, yeah. within the brand. Um, some brands are super strict and you can't do that. Yes. Um, and we're not one of those. We actually encourage it. Yeah. Um, so I think if you can provide the flexibility within your brand, um, then those other niche brands can live within Harcourts, um, you know, sure. and and they they're not attractive. So, um, yeah. you know, I I love seeing new players coming in, and I mean that sincerely. I I, I really sure. do because you get good ideas, and and it is good to shake up the market every now and again. But you can't be rigid as long as you're flexible. All is good. Yeah, you, and I think I, I think uh, you, you've touched on it. Harcourts has has been able to adapt because we've also been a young. We're an old company, as yes. I've mentioned, but we're a young company in South Africa, yeah. and that's allowed us to kind of be adaptive. When we see something come in, we can adapt and we can yes. work around it. Um, and yes, Harcourts has allowed me. You know, have never held me back from. Yes. You know the whole Camps Bay Guy yeah. brand and doing that. And now it's actually, I mean, we're sitting on a podcast, the Camps Bay Guy podcast, exactly. um, and having some great conversations. And I think and, yeah. the other thing, Josh, is that people, we have had a couple of people who leave to go to some of those other brands. A lot of them have come back. So, and, and it's yeah. not because of money or anything like that. Yeah. It's generally because of the culture that we spoke about early. So people yeah. miss that. You know, they find working on their own very lonely. Yes. Um, they miss the support they get. They miss the the other people and yes. that very unique culture that we have, where everybody's kind of pulling for each other, wanting everybody else to do yes. well, celebrating each other's success. They miss that, and I think that's uh, that's the thing that always pulls them back. When we speak to them when they come back and we welcome them back, um, that's the thing that they'll always mention is, "Oh, we missed that," you know. So that's good to know. Yeah, there's something special about being a part of something bigger than yourself. Yes. You know, as much as agents, we all want to do well for ourselves, and I think agents. Particularly, we are maybe a little bit self-centered, and we want our we we want to push our brand yes. out there. And obviously, we want to be better than the other guy. We're very competitive, but there's something special when you're part of something bigger than yourself and growing. Your success contributes to the success of someone else. Yes, um, and I think that is that special. And maybe Absolutely. you don't get that somewhere else, like an EXP, where you're sitting yeah. at home all day. Yeah, um, and yeah, you kind of you don't have you don't have an interaction within an office or within Correct. a team going to regional awards yeah. things like that. So not so everybody think, wants to yeah. talk to an avatar. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, and then what impact uh, do you think new technologies such as AI will have on the real estate industry? Wow, I, we could just do a podcast on that alone. <laughs> yeah, for um, sure. I, I mean, in, in short, I mean, I think that there's so many mundane and repetitive tasks in real estate that could be 
done through AI or technology generally. And I think some guys have already hooked onto that. Some good agents have hooked onto that already where they're getting tech and AI um, to work for them. Um, yes. Obvious things like chat GPT writing their write-ups for property listings, especially people who are not um, necessarily particularly good at writing those and they can write some good ones. Um, you know, just yeah. using tech in that way. Um, but I think we, we'll see it moving now into lead generation without a doubt. Um, which I think will be good. But at the end of the day, if it's used correctly to make the client experience better, in other words, make um, search more efficient for clients, you know, I'd like to see the portals using AI much better where instead of being presented with a whole whack of properties where they know the person who's searching better and it can narrow down their search for them, great. Yes. That helps everybody. Wow. You know, um, so I think it'll be things like that, that that will make the real estate experience better for everyone um, and make everything more efficient. Um, I do believe, though, that, you know, uh, that people are always very quick to jump to, oh, you know, robots will uh, replace uh, yeah. real estate people. Trust me, for 14 years now, I've been hearing about how tech's <laughs> going to replace real estate people. Yeah. Um, it doesn't. It's a massive, massive transaction that people are doing. They Most people really do want help. And as long as real estate people make themselves relevant and add value, they will be there. Yes. The beauty about tech and, you know, arms of tech like AI is that you can become more efficient, you can be more productive, um, you can use tech to make the client experience better. That's the exciting stuff. Yes. It's not being replaced. No, for sure. I mean specific things like whatsapp when you can you know they can automatically sure. chat with someone yes. let's say you're not available and we know it as as real, as real estate and sales people is that you know clients these days they want especially with online deliveries yes. and, and and shopping online they want an instant response yes. you know and ai can help us be better at responding yes. to our clients I, it's going to be interesting how that happens yes. and then i was telling you um before the episode yes. started i actually got a sales call I think yesterday from an AI bot and the AI, I was having a conversation with this AI bot yes. who was asking me, you know, how this service yes. could benefit me and why it, it was, it was crazy. Amazing. So, I mean, that's, that's the future. Yeah. Obviously it's going to be, be very tough to implement that in your lead generation now, because I think our clients want to have a relationship with yes. us. And as soon as they can tell it's an yeah. AI bot, well, they're going to put they'll the phone off. down. Yes. Um, but yeah, it will be, it, oh, it's, I'm excited to see, you. I'm excited and scared as an yes. agent, you know, imagine a robot can go out there and show a property for you yeah. um but i guess legally yeah i don't know where no, i don't know where it's going, it's still, going to be interesting i eh? still think there will be a massive role for real estate people yes. um and it will be the personal touch i do think though yes um for real estate people who are not adding value who literally yeah. just see it as a transaction who don't build relationships yeah. um i would say that they are much more exposed to For potentially sure. uh, not not having a great long term future, um, people need to really foster those relationships and and know where they add value. Um, that's the key. For sure, I mean it's it's all about the relationship yep. at the end of the as you've hit the nail on the head. When somebody's buying, it's their most expensive yeah. asset or the biggest transaction they'll make in their life. They want to feel special. You For know, sure. everyone wants to feel special. Yes. Um, and if you can make people feel special, then It'll yeah, you're that. gonna have gonna have a business. Yeah, as you said. I'd like to take a moment to introduce you to our foreign exchange partner, Currencies Direct. If you need to move money in or out of South Africa, just let me know and I'll connect you with their expert team. I recently had the opportunity to sit down with Kurbis de Kock to discuss their services in more detail. I would like to introduce our Forex partners, Currencies Direct. And I'm currently seated with Kurbis de Kock. What makes Currencies Direct stand out from other foreign exchange companies in South Africa. I think we've got the global footprint and the process of getting their funds here is as quick as a day. And we specialize in property. Why is it beneficial to use a forex company such as Currencies Direct when you're either bringing money in or, or taking money out of, of the country? The process, the onboarding, and by onboarding I mean registration is a very easy, customer friendly process that they follow. The client has basically a private Forex dealer. I think that puts them at ease that they can actually speak to a person. Thanks so much, Kubus. Really appreciate it. Um, if you guys need any Forex 
help, please contact myself and I'll put you in touch with Corvus. And we really appreciate you guys being a part of the podcast. And so what what's in the pipeline for the future of Harcourts in South Africa? Yo, we've got so much going on. Um, so let me just pick out a few things. So we, um, we're we launching our new brand position at the moment. Um, so Harcourt's um, new sort of tagline is we make it possible, which I think is just the most wow. awesome um, brand position for real estate. Because if Love you that. think about it, people buying a home, um, it's a dream thing. It's all about being maybe a little bit intimidated by it, but we make it possible, you know? So, uh, I mean, I could once again could yes. spend half an hour sitting just <laughs> yeah, telling yeah. you about that. So very excited about our, our new positioning of, of the brand. We make it possible. Um, awesome. We spent a lot of time on our tech platform last year, getting it to a point where we are ready to now start launching new and exciting products off that. Um, so wow. I think you'll see over the next little while, some great new products launching off that. Uh, we've just done a new partnership with a social media company, which is going to be uh, rolled out soon, which will improve our wow. social media. Um, they, yep, they've got some great tech that sits behind the scenes and does some fantastic automation for us. And sure. anyway, should should improve our, our social media. Um, we are obviously taking people uh, care of people's skills development. There's a lot of new uh, requirements around real estate, people coming in uh, into the industry and what needs to happen and a lot of change of qualifications. And we like yes. to take the pain away from our, our people by trying to help them with that. So a lot of work going on behind the scenes to, to sort that out. Um, we also sure. obviously are growing. Um, yeah. In the last two weeks alone, we've signed up two new Harcourts franchises. Yeah. Uh, so our, our office footprint is growing. So yeah, just loads of stuff going on um, at the moment, uh, Josh. Yeah, sure. lots of stuff going on. Exciting. I'm excited to see. Yeah. I'm excited as an agent at the yes. company. I'm very excited for the for these new new things yeah. to come in. And yeah, that's yeah. yeah. I, I love how we always um, growing and Doing looking for new, new ways to yeah. to do things. Yeah. Um, and with the exciting plans you've mentioned for the future of Harcourt, what specific initiatives and innovations are you most excited about, and how do you see them impacting the company and the industry as a whole? So, so I think um, a couple of things. I mean, one one is that we make it possible. So, yes. you know, I think the the positioning of that now we're in a country that kind of needs hope. Um, and we always sort of seem to take ourselves to the precipice um, and pull ourselves back. And 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 we were, you know, our, you know, we certainly people in in, in our country um, grasp at good news um, a lot of the time. And and I think a, a tagline like "We make it possible" speaks to that. So you know, even when things maybe are a little bit bleak, we make it possible. Uh, people are struggling often in in an economy like we've got now. But we make it possible. You know, people are not getting places even to rent that they're looking for. But we make it possible. So I think it's yeah. it's positioning ourselves as someone who can really help you, the yeah. client, um, in your journey. Um, so I'm very excited about that. I think we're scratching Amazing. the surface with that. So that's going to be one of them. Exciting. And then, as I said, the things that we're going to be able to build on top of our tech platform. Wow. Um, you know, we we spent a lot of time cobbling together. Our bespoke our own systems that we've built together with some industry systems which are kind of more the commoditized things and we've put that platform in place now that we can launch things off and i think that's really where we're going to go and then one thing i didn't miss, um, um, mention earlier is we're working with harcourts international on, on a new luxury brand okay um, wow. which will be also launching towards the end of the year so that's uh, that's also something super excited about that so sure yeah so lots going on here eh? lovely exciting yes. I'm, I'm very excited yeah the we make make it possible i think i'm, I'm excited for the launch of that campaign yeah. as well because yeah it's just it's something that you know we're a problem solver we, yes. we're finding the that's solution a, exactly. we're not we're not looking for the problems we're finding yeah. the solution and that's what we need in this country that is exactly right I would like to take a moment to introduce one of my sponsors, Harcourts Real Estate. As many of you know, I've been an agent at Harcourts for just over three years, and it has been one of the most rewarding experiences of my life. What truly sets Harcourts apart is culture, as well as the commitment to growth and innovation, both in technology and client interactions. The management team at Harcourts continually seeks to enhance the client experience and make our jobs as agents more efficient and effective. Thanks to Harcourts' incredible support, I've gone from a rookie to joining the Blue Circle Society, an elite group reserved for the top 10 agents in the company each year, within the short space 
of three years. This achievement is no small feat and is a testament to the backing and resources Harcourts has provided me with, allowing me to grow my own brand, the Camps Bay Guy, within the company. The training I've received at Harcourts has helped me become a distinguished luxury sales agent along the Atlantic seaboard. Some of my achievements include the highest sectional title sales in Mooley Point and Greenpoint for 2023. The company culture at Harcourts has fostered a dedication within me to cultivate enduring relationships with my clients, consistently delivering outstanding outcomes for them. I want to extend a huge thank you to Harcourts for partnering with me and sponsoring the Camps Bay Guy podcast. If you would like to find out more about our amazing company, follow the link in the description below. And over the last two years, um, as you've mentioned, we've seen many changes. Mm. How do you decide when to pivot and make a change um, as a business leader? There are so many people trying to sell us solutions. Um, how do you effectively implement change in a large organization such as Harcourt South Africa? I know there's a few questions in there. But no, I, no, no, I get yeah, that. It's coming from you know, more of a place where, you know, as an agent even, there's always someone trying to yeah. sell you the next lead generation tool, yes. the next this, the next that. Sure. And must be, I mean, you probably yeah. get that 10X or 100x what we're getting yeah. um, it's probably the yeah. toughest part of my job um, is, is saying yeah. no yes. um, and I think it's one of those things that you especially someone like who's got a bit of a techie background like me I get a bit excited about stuff like that so sure. I have to constantly rein myself in and yeah. th there's two things I always ask myself one is will this improve the client experience so is it going to be something that makes our clients have a better experience with the Harcourts and number two, yeah. is it going to grow our business? Is it going to be yes. something that helps our agents be more successful and grow their businesses? Um, and if it doesn't tick those boxes, then we probably shouldn't be looking at it. So, the, so that's quite an a good filter that that sort of filters things out. Um, yes. I also have really learned over the years that our network of Harcourts people can only absorb so much change at once as well. Though you know, yes. not everybody can just be bombarded with here's a new thing, here's a new thing, here's a new thing because. Yeah. You can't, and you know from your own business, yeah. you're spending 95% of your time servicing clients um, and growing your business. You can't be just yeah. dealing with a moving target as well. So um, you, you've got to get the balance right with that. So it For is sure. really difficult. Yeah, and I yeah. do seem to, gee, some days I go home and I just think, oh, all I did today was just say no. And I've, I'm like <laughs> such a damn squib, but I'm not yeah, really. Yeah. It's just you've got to do that. Otherwise, yeah. we would we would just run ourselves off our feet and – and really get nowhere. Um, so you've got to just focus on some key things. Every year, you know, I sit down and we make key decisions around what we're going to do this year and we stay focused on those things yes. because if we didn't, we would get to the end year and not have done any of those because we would just chased all the new bright, shiny lights that kept, you know, attracting yeah. our attention. So, you know, it, it's, well, it's a real challenge. And as a leader, that probably is the hardest thing is doing that. I can imagine. Yeah. Sure. And dealing with people's yeah. disappointment when they've <laughs> really pitched something at you and you've got to go, not not this year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's I, I think that you mentioned something, staying focused on yeah. your goal and Absolutely. your vision for the year. Especially, you know, doing the podcast and things like that that I'm doing now as well. I'm I'm feeling that on, on my side. Yes. You know, there's always there's another shiny object that comes and I think you you've hit the nail on the yeah. head there by saying, you know, stay stay true to your vision, For execute sure. that, and then you can look at it maybe the yep. next year or yep. see where it fits no, you in and then the next And maybe the timing's yeah. just not right. Yeah. Yeah. No. For sure. Sure. But yeah. Kudos to you for being able to <laughs> say all those no's. Um, and and yeah, we've kind of come to the end of the episode. I always like to ask um, all of my guests, what is your message for young people who want to enter the real estate industry? First of all, do it. Uh, I think it's a wonderful industry. And and prior to me joining it, uh, I didn't know enough about it to make that statement, but I can definitely say it is. Uh, a couple of key things though, it is really hard work. So if you think it's an easy industry that you can just waltz into and make tons of money, you can't. Um, the most successful people I've seen are all people who do the basics really well, who are prepared to do the hard yards. Um, yeah. It's not one of those things that you see on reality TV where people walk in and just make gazillions overnight. They do the hard yards. Um, uh, I look at someone like yourself who, who is prepared to do the, the canvassing, the prospecting, the, the stuff that nobody else enjoys, and then yeah. sees the success of that. Um, there's sure. no easy way. Um, it's not sales. 
it's yeah. much more service than sales. And, yeah. and we've said it a number of times today, it's relationships. Um, so just build those relationships, work hard on those relationships, make sure that even though someone might only be buying a house every few years, that yeah. you keep those relationships going um, and, and just work on those because that will make you successful That's at it. the end of the day. But uh, real estate's a wonderful place to be. Amazing. Thanks for that message. Yeah. yeah. I, think it's, I think that's great advice. <laughs> it's not easy out there. No, it's yeah. not. Um, so yeah, Richard, that kind of, that brings us to the to the end of the episode. I just want to say a, a massive thank you for you've come all the way out to Cape Town no um, to do this episode uh, and be with us and share your advice with all, with with everyone out there um, and and share all the amazing things that Harcourts has to offer. Um, and I think you you're doing a great job as the CEO of Harcourts, and, and I really want to say thank you for you know being the amazing leader that you are. Um, so, so thanks for joining I us really today. I really appreciate that. Thank and, you. Yeah. And pleasure. keep up the amazing stuff thank that you're you. doing. Um, uh, you're an yeah. inspiration to not just thanks. me, but to many people around. Uh, sure. I can tell you, uh, we do need breaths of fresh air every now and again, and you're sure. truly one of those. So thank you very much. Thanks so much. Yeah. Cheers.